but so um, your work at Princeton and when I first uh, became aware of it was around sugar and mm -hmm. you showed that sugar could be self-administered by lab animals as if it was a drug and maybe even said at the time that not only is sugar addictive, it could be considered one of the more addictive drugs. Yeah, so we got interested in this back in, I guess it was the year 2001 when I first started my PhD at Princeton. I was working with BART and, you know, we were kind of trying to come up with what we would be doing over the next couple of years together, what I would do for my dissertation. And at the time, you know, he, he, obesity was something that was on the radar of people, but it was starting to become talked about more and more as a public health concern. And back then, it was really thought that the onus was on the person who was obese, right? So if someone's obese, it's because they don't have willpower and they just, you know, can't control their cravings and it's really like their fault. And Bart and I talked about how, you know, it seemed a little odd that, you know, so many people struggled with obesity, but when you kind of sifted through the qualitative reports and actually talked to people who were struggling, they often pointed to sugar as being their downfall. And so we started toying with this idea of like, well, maybe there's something about the food that people are eating that's making them obese. And maybe they could become addicted to sugar, like people can get addicted to drugs or alcohol. So we really just started off by saying, okay, well, let's try to replicate a whole bunch of drug self-administration studies, but instead of using drugs like cocaine, let's use sugar and see if we get similar results. And so that's really how it started. 